Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us throughout this past week and reminding us from your servants, our dear pastors, through their messages that our calling is so important, it's so special. We pray, Father, that as we end our week of prayer through this devotion, through the message of Pastor Kamiya, may you please be with him and use him. Um, once again, that's another another one of your servants to deliver a message for us, your people. And for the time that we will have, we will spend together as brothers and sisters, a social night, where we come together and have fun and enjoy each other's company and grow together. We pray, Father, that may your holy angels be with us also. And that this, this night will be full of blessing. Thank you for loving and kindness. I pray that for those who are still coming, may you take care of them and bless them and may you bring them to your safety. This is pray in precious and holy name. Good evening and welcome to each one of you. Good evening. Um, before we proceed, I would like, since there's just a few of us, if each one of us can stand up and shake each other's hands. Let's do that. Stand up and shake each other's hands. Once again, welcome to the last part of our COP week of prayer. And tonight is our social night. Our song service is conducted by Aldi Payatta and Lisa Mantula. Our opening prayer was by Brent Spilletta. Welcome remarks, yours truly. Music offering will be offered by Tatai and Pitbenji Burke. And our message will be by our pastor, Rico Hamien. We want to thank each one that made it possible to be here tonight. And we want to thank the participants and also the pastor who will be sharing our message. Once again, welcome and we hope that we may leave this place blessed. We shall do. 
hear the invitation calling or drawing to Christ. She repeatedly used the word calling, drawing, bringing you closer to God. It's not a mission. You need to understand. It is the drawing. When you come close to God, you see a bigger world. You don't see yourself. But many of you think about Pastor O.K. Okay, one day I'll have a mega church. One day I'll be the real nice evangelist. One day I'll be this one. Those are not drawing of God. That's your drawing in your picture of your mind. But God will keep equip you with those. Because when they call you, the first response is you come closer to God. Okay? Come closer to God. And you see yourself pattern from, from Genesis down, the call of Abraham, the call of Moses, and all those patterns, along even the disciples. The same pattern God calls into ministry. Only with different experiences. For example, Paul. Why Paul was so different? Because he was a hard-headed boy. Right? He was notorious, so God called him in a notorious way. <laughs> right? You understand me? You need to understand that because he did a lot of bad things to God people, to God's people, so God did him also bad to experience that what he had done is really According to God, the law of let's tell you this. Tin for a tin, eye for an eye, that's what he did to Paul. Equal. Right? And so, it is clear, it is the drawing or the calling of the Holy Spirit come closer to God. Remember, the last Ellen White will tell us that. Because that is her experience. Okay? Present and future possibilities. When God calls you, sometimes it is people who will tell you, Hey, brother, hey, sister, I think when you study ministry, there is future in you. You'll be good leader, you'll be a good pastor. Did you hear that? But if your sermon is enough for them to backslide, <laughs> You're not called. There is always positive. I hear an old woman who told me, Pastor, of all the pastors who came here, I like you to teach us because one day you become a teacher because you are a very good teacher. You make simple things, no, make hard things simple and make hard things more harder. <laughs> So that's what he told me. I said, you I, I understand. I understand. Today I make sure. He said, we don't understand righteousness by faith. Then I said, okay, the Bible presents that there are human righteousness. Jesus says, unless your righteousness is said to the Pharisees scribe. Meaning to say, the Pharisees scribe have their own righteousness. And the people also, they have their own righteousness. And then Paul says in Romans 10, 1, and the Jews, the Israel, my people, I, I, how I wish them, because they are ignorant of God's God, righteousness, they have their own. So, this simply means, I tell the church, okay church, what is your righteousness? You have your own. You have your own. And this righteousness can be compared only to say, but that is not the righteousness of God. So it's easy to understand. Rather than discussing, you know, this is the righteousness imputed and imparted. Uh, you have all these things that they don't understand. Then I, I, I dramatized. I said, what is our righteousness, the righteousness of God? What is his evaluation? He says, it's filthy rags. What is filthy rags? According to scholar Clifford Goldstein, it's begin to be. Is a garment, the five garment used by women in their monthly cycle. That's your righteousness. That's the righteousness of the Pharisee. That's the righteousness of the Israelites. And that's all our righteousness. Do you like your righteousness? So, I mix difficult things easy. When you are called to a ministry, there are always, they will tell you, the way you sing, the way you talk, the way you lead, 
young people, there is always that element they can see in you. If they cannot see it, then leave the ministry today. <laughs> Look, he was old. Because God will call from young. Ellen White was young. He was old. John, the beloved, was young, 17. And you, I do not know when you are old. Probably you are plowing the field. Okay, leave the field and go to my field. I don't know which field. Battlefield. Okay? Look at Jesus. Let's look at him. When he looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Judah. You shall be called Cephas. Oh, here. He said, <coughs> Excuse me. He said, You are. He was looking the present status of Peter. But you shall be. Oh, did you see now? The potential in the future. Right? So, have you seen yourself potential in the future? One day you'll replace us. We will not stay long. Pag pinahirapan kayo ni Pastor Cunejos, ako, itong mga teacher, one day pahirapan ninyo mga teacher, yung mga sadyad ninyo. Because you replace us. Ang buhay ay with your with your love. With your namin ngayon. But you need to understand the calling. God look at because the potential for future not immediate. You get me? Who will tell that I learn a lot of things? But I hear that. I have a sweetheart that told me. Right of all the laymen here, I think you have the brain. I said, oh, I know there is a brain. <laughs> but he said, no, different. You study. Because if you're just only giving Bible study until there, you get married and no more. You study because you have a better future. And I hear that from several people. I said, my reason, where is my money? So money is not the problem. It's the way how you think you can achieve. And as I told you, even when I enrolled at Mountain View College, there was a lady theology who was handsome. I thought he was a professor. And I was so dirty because Mindanao at the time was not paid the room. So brown, 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 and like Charlie Brown. <laughs> Then I told him, sir, where is the office of the College of Theology? I want to enroll, I want to be a pastor. And he looked at me. <laughs> he looked at me, he said, then he was in Lombo. And he said, to, bawa may sila kaya sa theology, lang bawa ka ng nilang puto, bawa may ang bayo, puto, bawa matuwi ang kamaniya sa department. You'll be embarrassed by the shame of EB theology. And he walked. And I tried to find where is the office of EB theology. Because the EB office of EB theology is there, the, the, near, near the sky. <laughs> Fourth floor of Glory Skirt Auditorium. Just imagine that seeing me. But I hear a lot of people, so I was confused to enroll or not. So I would rather go to GM. General mechanics and smell diesel and gasoline. <laughs> it's a call. Listen to what Jesus was calling. He called Peter, You are Ilwin. One day you'll become Pastor Ilwin. You will be, you will be, you will be, you shall be, you will be. Why there is no army? and to use for the ministry. Yeah. Are you getting me? Yes. Next. Look at again. Let's go back to the disciples. As they were fishermen, and he said to them, follow me. Wow. Many of you probably went ahead with Jesus. Ellen White says, 
When we follow Jesus, we will never make wrong decisions. But many are running and went after him, and they will be disappointed because they will retrace their footsteps. Follow. He called them, come and follow me, come and follow me. Sometimes you need to follow ah, He's my teacher who says, okay, you become a minister, he said, you have another follower. You need to look at what Jesus is saying. So, the brother present is not just fishermen, but their future possibilities. I will make preachers of men for God's church and kingdom. There was a movement of progress from earth to heavenly, from material to spiritual, from uncertainty to certainty. That's clear. Okay? Next. Let's look at that because it will help us. It will help you. The Savior knew the character of whom we have chosen. All their weaknesses and errors are open before them. Is that also yours? Me? Yes. God knows what are my weaknesses. What are my errors in life? He knows that exactly. But listen, they are big men as they are. With their human elements character, they are not chosen because they are what? But what? Notwithstanding their imperfection, the true knowledge and practice of truth, through the grace of Christ, they will, you will be transformed. Amen. That's a folly. Did you understand what Ellen White? Because look at now, we have few slides with Ellen White. And I will tell you what I'm discussing because I saw that from Ellen White. Okay? So, look at that. So, we are not perfect. Who is perfect? Who is not getting angry here? Who is not uh, really telling a lie? White lie, blue lie, or all those kinds of lies? All of us, we have our own weaknesses. We deny, right? We have. God knows all of us. The most important, we must need honest to God. Sometimes we don't need honest to you. Why? You don't understand me. But God understands. So it's better to be really honest with God and you conceal some of those things with your friends and your classmates because they don't understand you. That's why I told you that in many other classes, when you become a minister, find a pastor whom you can find all your mistakes and he will still embrace you as brother as in the ministry, regardless of what is your sin. But there are so many policies in the ministry. You say, huh? He committed that one? Well, the important ministerial so that he will be disciplined and will take his position. Ah, Judas. <laughs> <laughs> Not the way how we understand. What's that? Practice, knowledge, and practice of truth will transform each one. Will transform you. Okay? This is our business. Now let's go back. Calling or growing. This way you will find that in scripture you are called to be saints. You are called, you are called, you are called, you are called. The Corinthians, the Romans, the Galatians, the Ephesians. Paul says you are called. Repeatedly. In the Bible, it's simply clear that the first work of salvation is calling. Because you are not called first to minister. You are called first to salvation. Because if you are not saved, how can you minister to other people? Are you getting me? <laughs> Although your idea of salvation is blurred, but God already saved you first. Amen. That's the main reason you are called. To save you from sin so that your experience will be manifested to others who need salvation. Amen. You focus more on ministry rather than salvation. You are called because God wants to save you. And by that saving you, then you are the agents of saving other people. So, you need to understand that. So, look at the terms, okay? The stroke of God's call is universal and really strong the Bible. In the Old Testament, in the New, God call is loud and clear. For instance, when man fall into sin, God called Adam and said, Where are you? That call 
continues under the cross of human probation. He's calling you. Where are you? Erwin, where are you? Wang Wei, where are you? And sometimes, our answer, I'm hiding like Adam. When God told you, where are you? That's the best answer is like someone. Here am I, Lord. Send me. He said, where are you? Oh, I'm calling. That's true. Where are you? I'm still teaching. Where are you? I'm in Pasillo. Respond. This is what we need. Because that's what Ellen White experienced. We want you to review all those things. I have no time to do that. Okay, in answer to the call of invitation of God, for example, Jeremiah responded, We come to you, for you are our Lord, our God. Our God is everything to us. Jesus said, Come to me, all of you, who are heavenly living, and I will give you rest. In the parable of the wedding feast, the invitation is to come to God's kingdom. The appearance of the book of Hebrews, let us come boldly to the throne. In the apocalypse, the same intensity and seriousness. Come! It's a call. When you are called to the ministry, you are also called other people to the salvation of Christ that we offer. You need to understand that. You need to understand. Now, <coughs> it is also a universal call indicated by the word, however, everyone. This call it variously expresses as a call to be saints, high calling, upward call, holy calling, heavenly calling. God is the one who called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. The calling or the drawing of the sinner is the first step to salvation. It is God's love that called you out into darkness into his marvelous light. Holy, holy, holy. Remember that one. That's really what we need because you are called. Okay? Now, the ground and the basis of calling. Okay? The calling of a sinner by God is grounded on his divine love. That's why I want to remind you, Ellen White says, no one will go to heaven, even you are a minister, unless you are convinced 100% that God loves you so much. It's the basis of his love. He did not call you because of your talents, future possibility. He called you because of that divine love that enveloped his person, his character, his government, and you have to manifest those love to others when you are called. Hmm? So, the agape love, it is God who loves us because humanity's love, love darkness rather than light. The scripture claims, we love him because he first loves us. And his love, we are modest to keep ourselves in love with God. For God is love, and he who abides in love abides in him. The love of God is too wonderful to describe. What manner of love, the love of God, of humanity is everlasting. So, what is our response to his call? Respond to his love. To tell you frankly, your ministry, if it is not founded on divine love, one day you may say, Praise the Lord, but you are in hell. But when it is founded on love, no matter how darkness, how difficult, how challenges, when they are founded by God's love. So that's why you don't need to ask, Okay, I will assign you to the remote place. Oh, this is not God's will. This is the will of the committee. <laughs> because I know God's will. I will be assigned in a city where I will not walk for 10 kilometers. What do you? When you got called, remember? Remember what happened to Paul. When he was called in Damascus, God said, okay, pack up your things. You go to Saudi Arabia in the desert for three years. I will teach you there. Just imagine that. Three years, he unlearned, and then why he says, he unlearned all those things. And that's why Paul could say, it was God who instructed me. I did not receive that from Peter. I did not receive that from the apostle. But Jesus instructed me in the desert for three and a half years. 
But when you read it wrongly, because after he was converted, he preached. No, you read, after three years, that's the time he came back and preached. You need to understand that. That's the kind of what we have. So the everlasting love. Ellen White says, no one can go to heaven unless he understands that God loved him so much. Right? Today, do you really love God so much? That's why we need to ask that question. Because sometimes you love so much your sweetheart rather than God. Because you are following God. Love one another and another one. <laughs> hmm? I hope you remember this week of prayer. Always remember that. It is really the love of God that He is going to bring us to heaven. The same love that He calls you into the ministry. Okay? Now, let's go. <coughs> Ellen White. Her personality as a Baptist, she was a gloomy young lady. Okay? Introverted, melancholy. She had intense inner life with expectation. Her conversion spanned for about seven years of undergone several places. Why at Retri she was hit by a stone. And she was angry with God. He had a wrong picture of God. But she undergone several phases of conversion. And like you, you will be converted in different way. Do not tell me that you are converted once. I am converted several times because conversion occurs, but you have the point, the first part of your conversion, where God calls you to repent and to understand, to love Him, to respond. Those are really the markers. And then, and then what I say? Okay, she experienced that big conversion. Why? She was so weak. And so when you are uh, weak and dying, what you're going to do? Lord, I surrender all. That's what she did. So, she reasoned with justification while on the deathbed. You said, yes, imagine, she was young. But she wants to secure salvation because no one will be saved without being what? Justified and forgiven of sin. She was not clear with that. Although, she was a Baptist, Methodist. And so what he did, and finally the issue of sanctification and holiness in terms of second coming. Four doctrinal beliefs that she struggled before her conversion. Justification, forgiveness of sin, and sanctification and holiness. So she met an accident in 1836-37. And so what happened? She thought that she would die. In her weaknesses, she gave her heart to Jesus. That's common because when you are almost raised in peace, naturally, say, Lord, I surrender. <laughs> How many times I almost die? I said, Lord, it's time. I cannot remember all my sin, but you have remembered it. But you have such grace to forgive me and erase all those sin by your grace. If I die, I give my life to you. But I'm alive. Many times they have done that. They have done that. Especially when we got sick. Sometimes the illness, you lose. Sometimes God sent us these challenges so that we can rethink. Okay? So, however, she recovered from the accident and she entered into the phase of conversion. So, one was because of physical problem. She was converted. She was not yet cold. But you have to understand, when God extended her back of life, rather than dying, she keep on living. That's education of all. Because she come closer to Jesus. Okay? So, now, <coughs> her accident interrupted her educational plans and produced better thoughts on God. Wow. Why God did not touch the hand? If he was so powerful, why did not hold the hands of that my classmate so that I will not be hit? Just imagine I'm crippled throughout life. 
simply more on God the Father because she had no clear picture of God. Sometimes you have that. Sometimes I have. Right? Negative picture of God. But she was growing in their understanding. But really realizing that Jesus could forgive her sin, she experienced in 1841 Methodist camp at meeting at Noah's in Buxton, Maine. At the lowest point of her life, she dreamed Jesus. If you look at here in her book, Life Speeches, that's why I want you to have that, she said, in the lowest point of her life, in a dream, Jesus came and she, she avoided the gaze of Jesus, but she was really cannot make it. And so finally, Jesus told her, fear not, because I love you. Everything changes. And in fact, Ellen White said, that encounter produced happiness that never experienced. She said, it's too joyful to utter, neither to write. What's that? The drawing to Christ. That's what she experienced. So, but still, she was not okay with her experience. But there was a man so spiritual, so learned of scripture by the name of Levi Stockman. He was a Methodist Adventist minister. And Eunice Harmon told her, Mr. Levi, you give Bible study to my teacher, uh, to my friend, Ellen White. And so she learned, changed her life. A Methodist Adventist, oh, so spiritual, explain about God the Father according to my teaching. And Ellen White changes her idea about God. No longer the bitter thoughts of what happened to her, but she said, I cannot express how really God is wonderful. So she experienced that. And so, that was her call. She was called. When she was called, it was not immediately. You know already, William Post and Hassan, uh, William Foy and Hassan Post were called. But she was so reluctant. Moses was reluctant. <laughs> I'm not a good in speech. Jeremiah says, oh, I have, uh, Isaiah says, I have a dirty lips. Jeremiah said, no, I'm young. All reluctant. But when God equipped, because you are, you shall, then she responded. If you try to look at her prophetic meat, number one was the midnight cry. He saw that in a narrow road, the people of God passed. Rabin, Rabin, and the only way is to look to Jesus. Maybe he did not look to Jesus, fall down on the pit on both sides. And that was her vision. And her vision was that she was old and she has to look to Jesus ever, never divert her mind. And she did that in the last 70 years of his life, of her life, in her calling. Okay? So, the second, the bridegroom, it was Jesus led people from holy to the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary. Just imagine, Ellen White was called by God, she simply says, you tell, you write what I have revealed to you. Simple. And she did it. And she followed. These are three major. Okay? Following the sanctuary, the last, the new earth, it was Jesus personally showed Ellen White the future glory of the new earth. <clears throat> From that call in 1844, 1845, that vision changes the life of Ellen White and responded. She was weak, the weakest among the weak, the uneducated, and yet God supplied because as we have said, when God calls, including our witnesses, our error, but he will supply all. So, I have the last question there. Okay? Do you have a sense of being called to the ministry? You see, yes. yes. So I'm asking you, 
Do you have the sins?
I think I want to read the citation. Adventist University of the Philippines, Pulinay, Sinang Kamilya. Galician Theology presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Rico Avien for selflessly sharing his support, time, knowledge, and sex expertise as speaker during the week of prayer of Galician Theology with the team The Road to Damascus held at Room 405 Galician Theology Building given this 24th day of November 2017 in Galician Theology AUP Campus, Pulinay, Sinang Kamilya. Thank you, Pastor. And we would like also to acknowledge the, the presence of uh, Dr. Winnie. We are going to pass If he is here, okay? So, there's, we have also this certificate of appreciation for him for selflessly sharing his time and expertise for the technical support of the documentation during the week of prayer at the College of Theology with the team the Road to Damascus. And also for uh, Wilmer Jimmy Strito is here. Okay, for uh, for making the layout design of our week of prayer for the College of Theology. Okay, okay so that's all and uh, I hope you are totally blessed and we are asking for your continual support for our Kavish Theology in the YMC. Thank you and God bless you.
thank you for impressing in the mind of these young people in their call to the ministry with varied gifts, talents, and above all, we want to commit them into your loving hands that you will prosper as the team plan so that their plan will be going with your plan for their future life, for the life of the church as they serve. We want to commit them that while they are doing still here as a student, you will simplify the life of a minister so that they will be prepared. Thank you for equipping them. Many of them, the Lord lacks some knowledge, some wisdom, practicality. Thank you for supplying them because your grace is sufficient for them. Help us also, teachers of the College of Theology, to enhance them in the way how we can share what we have so that they will be palace for the ministry and it's your Holy Spirit will make them perfect in the way to fit in for the work in your kingdom. So thank you for all these privileges. This time you have given us well time spent in uh, understanding the calling into the ministry. Thank you for all your goodness and blessing and protection and care. We ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.